So guys, we are back live and uh, we are here in our commentary booth with uh, Daniel of Switzerland. Uh, Denmark. <laughs> Denmark. Okay, <laughs> I, I mix uh, this up all the, all the time. Uh, first uh, first time I uh, assumed uh, you were uh, from Cyprus, so which is not uh, too bad. <laughs> no, that's okay. Uh, I get a few different things from uh, the beard on my face. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, the majority of uh, those who play on Eurotours or maybe some other uh, tournaments throughout the Europe, uh, of course, are familiar with you because uh, you uh, were taking uh, part in uh, some kind of stuff like streaming uh, for the Eurotour, right? Yes, a little bit. Um, I was uh, also playing the European Championships representing Denmark uh, back in April. Uh, and that was uh, also at a time where uh, I was in pretty good form. Did you have to beat uh, Bahram Malfi for uh, to qualify for the European Championship? Uh, no, actually not. Uh, because I won one Danish Championship. We had all four disciplines in one, de in like in one stretch. Yeah. So I won the 9-ball championship, Bram beat me in the final of the 8-ball championships uh, and he played pretty good in that match, uh, I think he beat me 8-4 and then I got to two more semi-finals, so I had, I had accumulated enough points to actually get there, so that was okay. So, um, uh, How did you learn about uh, the Kremlin Cup since you are here? I've seen it uh, for a couple of years on the stream and seen the news and you know I've I've been to Russia for about seven times now because of the music uh, so I I I felt to myself it would be a good thing to actually try and combine it while I'm at work with the music here as a DJ and uh, participate in the tournament and uh, this this is also why I'm here now uh, I'm supposed to play uh, a DJ job uh, here in Moscow oh, on, nice. on the 12th Cool, so but uh, what if you are busy uh, playing the final here? <laughs> uh, that's not going to be a problem because the party is at one thirty. Ah, okay, yeah. At night, so <laughs> so if I uh, accidentally should go and win it by all surprise, then uh, I just have an extra celebration. So Very nice. But uh, so wishing you luck over there. Yeah, thanks a lot. And there's uh, quite a good few players here that uh, could get in my way. That's for sure. Well, here One we of them being here at yes, the table. Here, here we have Mika Imanin uh, uh, versus uh, Stalimir Ruslan of, uh, from Bulgaria here in the box. And, uh, yeah, that's and the I first wreck. And I have never really seen Ruslanov play before, I think. So it'll be tough to call what... Uh, I what think the uh, first first uh, couple of wrecks uh, will reveal uh, what he is capable of doing yeah. here. Yeah. But it's not always a telling story that uh, you know what what sometimes the best players actually maybe start a little bit rough and then then it switches at some point. Yeah, sure. So uh, from one time to another, yeah. every one of us players uh, get out of stroke. He got a little bit of a roll there. Yeah, it barely hold, but still, that's yeah. okay. <laughs> but it uh, looks like he's able to just get by. If he's not, then... Oh, to me, it looks like a complete snooker. Is it completely? Yeah, this angle is... Well, and a uh, little watching Mika uh, reaching for the jump here. Yeah. It's obvious now. He's uh, quite, a, quite a good jumper, so uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see if he pots this and gets good shape on the two. But... Uh, it's early days, so uh, let's see what he does. So how do you like uh, the diamond table? Have you played uh, on it uh, before? Uh, how this much? Is, this is uh, the first uh, tournament. Many? The first tournament I've ever played with the diamond table. And I must say, uh, shout out to uh, the diamond team, because this is far and away the only table I class as the best in the world. It really is a dream to play on. Great angle here, if the cameraman goes back for that one. Yeah. We can see him jumping over the four. What yeah. did I tell you? <laughs> great, 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 great call, yeah, and great play by Mika Imen. Yeah, great jumper. But yeah, back on the tables, really, um, I'm surprised to see that the tables are so level in the way that they are. I haven't really had any bad roll-offs. Uh, the only thing is just obviously the tip. Yeah, uh, the, well, the secret uh, behind this is uh, we have uh, Paul Smith, uh, diamond table mechanic, uh, so he, he was the one who yeah. first leveled uh, some uh, tables uh, himself and then uh, showed the crew how uh, yeah. it is to be done properly and uh, he yeah. was very satisfied with the result. Yeah, I heard about the special yeah. leveling system and really this should be implemented in more tournaments because it plays really true and you, you, you feel like you know where the cue ball is going. So yeah, and actually, I think uh, everyone uh, who uh, 
Uh, is playing uh, this year uh, will uh, second you on this uh, opinion because uh, I was a participant like maybe three or four years ago and the tables, uh, some of the tables uh, were okay but uh, some rolled off uh, pretty bad so yeah. that, that wasn't uh, very nice to play It happens every tournament you know there's always going to be one or two tables that are not not really great but uh, for the most part here I really haven't seen anything that was bad I had a couple of misses from Is the guys on the table over around the cubo? Yes. Stops. In <laughs> oh, he stops a little, time. A little bit. Really? Ah, yes. I see. We, we, our yeah. commentary booth is just uh, right uh, opposite the, the player shooting yeah. here, and we see it's okay. But yeah, they just had a couple of misses on the two ball, both of them. But uh, I think uh, just, just maybe warming up a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Early jitters. It always happens. Go around in three cushions. And I think maybe the speed is uh, surprising him a little bit because he's nearly overrunning the shots. So, but also because this table was not allowed to be practiced on the first day where everybody was practicing, so, so he it's a little bit quicker. Yes, it gets more speed. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take him a couple racks, then he'll get the feel for the speed and be in the driving seats. Little info about the queue he's playing with. We know that he's a mess player, but. It's actually not his own queue. It's a loaning queue. Only for this uh, particular event, or until he gets his uh, new queue. Ah, He's so having one in the works, and I've seen a prototype of it, the design, and it is gorgeous. But uh, it's taken a while because they made it first without a rep, and he didn't like the feel without a rep, so uh, they had to redesign it so that it uh, fit him. Yeah, very interesting. First game here for Imonen. Yeah, I can't wait to see the finished version of that. Some great designs from that uh, Q maker, Mets in Japan. Alright, let's take a look uh, how uh, this uh, wrecking template uh, performs because uh, there have been a little issues with the previous one in the previous match, so we had to replace it actually. Yeah, I, f I seem to think that the ones we had, the white ones on the other tables, are quite good actually. Um, they play uh, pretty true to what you expect from uh, practice, so. Didn't really have any problems with it. Well, the the major issue uh, why we had to, to replace it that uh, was uh, like a ten ball on the break was traveling directly to one of the corner pockets. Oh yeah, that yeah. should never happen. It, it, it never stayed in place. At, uh, yeah, well, time to change uh, it. And uh, regardless uh, of the rule, uh, we have uh, just uh, we, the combo shots on a uh, ten ball doesn't count. No, a exactly. Anyway, yeah, that's not the way uh, the wreck should behave. No, exactly. You should just really stay on the spot if they break it yeah. correctly. Usually. There you see. Yeah, just, on the just like that, yeah. Uh, three ball goes in. Pretty nice, pretty nice. And the he's got a shot on the one as well, yeah. Yes, and the Long two straight ball one. The, the two ball is uh, just uh, in front of the side pocket. Yeah. Six ball seems to be stuck on a magic rack, so yeah. uh, he might actually elect to wait getting it moved. Yeah. He accepts the the position of the six. Oh, I don't know actually if uh, the referee team uh, has the ball marker. Oh, they should have. Yes, um, they should be. But, but uh, it either way, like you can use a chalk. Uh, about three years ago, uh, it was a completely different story. And well, using uh, I think using a chalk uh, at the event uh, like this, uh, well, and uh, the, this kind of uh, broadcast uh, is not uh, acceptable, my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. It, it doesn't look still classy. It, doesn't, still still it yes, doesn't look classy. Still, still better than anything, than nothing. But uh, that's true. Yeah, you're but supposed to. It's not. It's not. Uh, it's not expensive after all to have a ball marker. No, exactly. The only problem with the ball marker is that uh, you almost have two sides. So if you push it a little bit to the side, you can actually risk moving the cue ball a little bit. So there are some other variations of it. I've seen in the snooker. Some of uh, the referees had some ball markers where it was more like a yes, square and, uh, and you can just kind of... Actually, they um, uh, the majority of them are custom made yeah. for the leading referees. Oh, this could actually be a little bit tricky, I'm thinking, with the magic rack. 
you you don't want to roll this one. You kind of got to sh shoot at it. Yes, yes, uh, you you are absolutely right. Uh, and the Mika yeah. just calls the referee to yeah, have, yeah. It, have it removed. Yeah, because ah, they they <laughs> you do, you don't get your way because they're using the chalk. <laughs> um, <sighs> <laughs> I have no no comments. No comments. <laughs> nah, it's okay as long as the six. Uh, oh, it does pass. Yeah, it does pass. Okay, I was just about to say. Yeah, and he's taken it into the center pocket, it looks. Wow. Yeah, and Mickey is not going to slow roll it either. Shot. Uh, he just changed the tip, actually. And yesterday he was fiddling around with it a little bit. Um, he got a couple of miscues in practice, and uh, uh, but uh, well, you know, uh, I'll just uh, reveal some information. It was uh, yeah. actually me who replaced uh, the tip for him, yeah. and uh, I just approached him and asked uh, how do, how does he like uh, yeah. it, uh, and uh, he said that actually this tip is installed on his spare shaft. So here, uh, I think uh, he still uses uh, the other one, not the not 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 the new one, not the newest one. It could be, yeah. Uh, yeah, because yeah, uh, the, the one he had yesterday looked it like it was bigger it, it, than it, this it, one. It, it was black, actually. And here yeah. it is Camuy Brown. Is it the brown? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but... Yeah, that's the thing. He's, 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 he's a perfectionist, so this means that... Yeah, so probably uh, it was not the tip to blame, actually, in this very miss. No, exactly. Just the fact that you're alternating between the shafts is enough. I think, I think he just approached the seven a uh, little bit... Uh, more quick uh, than yeah. the majority of his uh, like yeah. tempo. So it means yeah. that we get the yeah. Roslanov from uh, Bulgaria. Yeah, on, on the, the scoreboard, the which is very nice because, yeah. like, actually, uh, until uh, Mika missed that <coughs> seven, I was afraid of uh, this being a whitewash. Yeah, nah, <laughs> not gonna happen. <laughs> 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 with, you mean with alternate break uh, or? Yeah, with alternate breakers, you know. This should be a chance to get at least two or three racks, and then again, if you don't, you don't play well enough usually. So, um, but yeah, I like the alternate break format because uh, you have to be on it from the from the get go. Uh, so, not not. Uh, well, now it seems like a never-ending story uh, about like they're trying to pick uh, which is best. Uh, is it a winner breaks or alternate breaks? Because it I mean, it every depends e on e the player. Every, every kind of format uh, has uh, its uh, advantages yeah. and drawbacks. It's it's what you're used to, and if you look at how Shane, for such a long time, when he was playing overseas tournaments away from America, uh, how poorly he was doing until he actually started winning the Whirlpool Masters. He uh, suddenly uh, kicked into gear and found out what this alternate break format was about. Um, before that, like with the US Open with being winner breaks, he was just getting on a roll and he could run like six, seven, eight wrecks, yeah, you know? Yeah. And, and you get confidence from that. And if you're used to playing winner breaks, then the alternate format is really shocking. Well, and actually, so like stringing wrecks together is one of the beauties of uh, like uh, this very format, like yeah, winner think, breaks. You know, it's there's nothing more exciting le than, let's say, a player gets up six or seven zero, and suddenly your opponent comes back at you with a six or seven pack, and you, there is a you have a match on, you know. There is a one uh, match uh, like uh, back from the time uh, when uh, world pool championships were run by Matchroom Sports, uh, when Efren uh, and Busta. Mm, the other one, like uh, mm. I think it was a uh, maybe the same uh, example, but uh, the match was between two Taiwanese. Uh, I think it was like maybe r race to nine, and first one of them uh, yeah, I remember that one. runs runs eight racks, yeah. and the other one who was like sitting maybe like uh, for an hour, yeah. he uh, steps out of his chair and he runs nine on them, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. on his opponent. That was uh, absolutely amazing. And unfortunately, was it Wu, Wu before he was changed his name. Yeah, uh, Wu Chachin. Wu Chachin. Wu Wu Chachin. Now it's Wu Yaqing. Actually, he is still Wu Chachin. Uh, it's as far as I learned. Yes. It's not. It, uh, it's just. It's, it's just different transcription. Uh, first, it was in uh, Taiwanese. Uh, like Taiwanese to English, yeah. and now it is Chinese to English, but uh, it sounds like just the same. <laughs> yeah, because when I'm looking at it, it looks yeah, like yes, Wu yeah. Wu, Yaqin. Wu, Wu, Wu Yaqin, it looks like. Yeah, yeah but, but still it reads Wu Chachin. So it's, it, it might be Wu, but uh, I yeah. don't remember the name, but, but uh, yeah, he it, was it, it was fascinating. Like uh, He was my favorite player, and still is one of my favorite players. Uh, good yes, left-hander, no, by no, the way. No wonder, because... Uh, so it's it aggressive. Means if you said, by the way, it means that uh, you are left-hander as well. Huh? Yeah. So yeah. Same story with me. <laughs> I, 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 always, uh, I always spot a, a left-handed player because like, <laughs> yeah. I, that's the way I'm used to play. 
Well, Wu currently, if you have uh, heard about a so-called thing like a Fargo rate, recently uh, mm, a new, new, new American rating system based on uh, uh, head-to-head records versus yeah. uh, d- d- different opponents. So yeah. it's like uh, believed to be the most true like uh, ranking system. So yeah. uh, Wu Shachin is the leader there. He's the best. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised yeah. actually. Uh, he's uh, he's quite the handful still. Uh, an attempt at a safety here, and uh, he's left a gap here for Mika. He can pot the three into his left, and that's also our bottom left corner pocket on this particular c- camera angle. So can go around just past the ten, I think. Gotta make sure that he gets shape on the four. Oh, I just tried to find your name for the sake of it on Fungo Rate and I failed. Yeah. <laughs> it features like uh, a <coughs> first, first hundred. Ah, okay. A hundred players, yes. No Daniel Candy there. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I'll do my this. best. So you see, it's a Wu. Maybe after this tournament. Yes, it's a Wu with Shane and Morning and Dennis Orkulio who are leading. Yeah. Okay, so Mika is actually back in shape here after two kisses and a couple of good shots so yeah he's still he still seems like he's uh, you know trying to find the pace but I think especially from 7 to the 8 is going to judge show you how he judges the pace I should say well, with all the background Mika has got uh, traveling around the world, no so wonder he, he, he's going to find uh, yeah. the key to how the stable plays, yeah. like maybe in next track or a couple of reps. Yeah. And I think actually that showed, playing that with backspin, he's still maybe thinking the table is a little bit, bit fast and he didn't want to go around the 10 and 2 cushions. He drew, he drew it back, and uh, but it's not a bad position. He's... Uh, off straight, so he can just pull this back. Yeah, probably still not as good as uh, he could yeah, wish for. No, so he's th- on th- the that is the reason. Yes, he he, he left the cue ball yeah. on the cushion here. We have already seen uh, one of the players missing, missing wow, the wow, wow, me wow, missing wow, the almost. ten ball plane uh, off the cushion. Yeah. I had one uh, exactly like that one actually, uh, and I hit it thin. Um, the shape of the cushion is a little bit different, so your delivery has to be a little bit different of the cue as well. Uh, of course, nobody, even uh, the m- very best of the top players, uh, n- nobody likes uh, having a cue ball on the cushion, and even Shane Bowning. Uh, no, for sure. Yes, when asked uh, what is the best advice, uh, you could... Uh, Don't land on the cushion. So yes, that's <laughs> it, exactly. <laughs> stay on the middle of the yes, table. Uh, just stay away from the cushion. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. But um, he gets it. Also a wise decision not to try and hammer it because the cloth is obviously new and uh, these pockets will accept the balls a little bit more generously when uh, they wobble at a slow pace. So so he did good. Breaking from the cushion. Yeah. And he m- must have been using like uh, 35 40 percent uh, of his power yeah, in that his was stroke. That was a soft break because uh, I see Ralph also in the last match had somewhat of like a 50 percent break, but this was even slower. So I think he was trying to go for one of those balls into the center pocket, but. Uh, it seems like he's having trouble reading the magic rack so far. I think he should give the harder break a little bit more of a chance. Um, I tried a soft break once or twice here and it didn't really work, so... Um, not saying that that's the only well, in the way long to do in it. In the long run it might depend uh, on the table, yeah. how this very particular table breaks. Uh, For sure. Uh, yeah, some would accept uh, like slow uh, soft break and some yeah. would not, uh, but... Oh, it's always preferable, I think, uh, just to, to, hammer, to hammer them. <laughs> yeah. It's all uh, about the measure of control. Yeah, for sure. But um, I seem to think, actually, that he's good enough at, at controlling the cue ball, popping it up and l- making it land center of the table. Yeah. So yeah. Um, 
I think if he gets a couple of games up, I think we'll see him speed up the break again. Um, I think his main reason for maybe slowing it down was the fear of maybe going in off. I don't know. Well, so far we have Stalimir here at the table. Yeah. And the position is pretty nice. You could just go around one cushion. Lands pretty decent. Nearly straight. Six is just in front of the center pocket as well, so... Yeah, just uh, a stop shot here and uh, run through there. And here on the seven. Yeah, just a tiny bit of backspin. Tiny, well, tiny bit. Well, probably, probably getting from uh, seven to the eight might be a little bit of uh, concern because, like, the position zones are limited. Yeah, exactly. You don't wanna, you don't wanna snooker yourself on the ten or the nine if you prefer the other. For that other matter, way, yeah. <laughs> really depends which way you play it. If you play it with topspin or backspin. So of course, playing uh, towards the ten is preferable because the the, the position zone is bigger and more open there. Yeah, for sure. If he can get close to... Well, I'm not sure actually about this angle. No, this is too much. Yes, diamond tables can be pretty tough. Uh, I'm thinking maybe guy. he had a kick. I don't think he would necessarily l place himself like that. So, might have had a bad contact with the cue ball. But he's potted it good. Cue ball is not scratching. That's a good shot if it stops. No. No. No, I don't think so. I think he he snookered. Wow. I maybe think that. Yes, that's that was the just uh, this very thing I was talking about. Yeah. I was worrying about. It yeah, was it was the most dangerous area, especially provided uh, yeah. about the uh, yeah. speed of the table being a little bit uh, yeah. higher. So it was uh, like dangerous even playing yeah. two two rails uh, to get hooked behind the ten. But then again, the problem was with such a big angle on the seven, you yeah, couldn't really yes, do anything yes, else. You had to chance it. If he had been straighter, he could have played the shot where he was uh, closer to the 9, and uh, then he could have had 2-2. Two, two. Anyway, he calls the shot. Yeah. The jump itself here is not the most difficult. It's, yeah, more, sure, because it's, it's, uh, it's more keeping the cue ball on the table. So the pot itself is not going to be yeah, the it's problem. It's not a full, uh, full ball hook. It's yeah, maybe exactly. like uh, only half, half a ball. Yeah. So interesting to see if he's going to jump this with a little bit of uh, top spin or center so it kind of jumps forward with the d8 let's see how he jumps this yeah you see he's not aiming that low so he's hoping that the cue ball is gonna follow miss hits it yeah, and leaves the table yeah yeah he does leave it Those are the kinds of things that uh, you can't take for granted against a player like Mika. Or any of the top players here on the circuit. They usually make you pay. I say that and he's actually off on, this on a 9. It's potable for sure, but he has to go around a couple of cushions. Low right, come back for the 10. Good shot. Trademark shot, actually. How uh, how good this the spin grips on the cushion. So he's uh, again he's on the cushion, but should be okay. As, as straight as Mika Imanen shoots. Yeah, that's better. That's three not much of a problem, hopefully for him. No. So just getting that two frame or two game gap is uh, gonna help his confidence a little bit. Yeah, I think he. I think he was just testing the cushion there. Do we have a timeout already? <laughs> I th think he might be, yeah. That's pretty early to use it. Yeah, because I just uh, don't see Ruslanov here at the yeah. table. I would never use it at 3-1, like I would at, at least give it one more game. Let's say if he came, come, comes down, you know, 4-1, yeah, of course. Yeah, sure, it's it still, makes a long, still a long way to go. Yeah. So it's a, it's a bit early, like a two-game gap is not disastrous, so...
Okay, so far, uh, since we are having a timeout, maybe taken by Stanimir Ruslov, player from, from Bulgaria, so we have a chance to uh, browse through the brackets. Well, uh, as for uh, Torsten Homan and Denis Grabe, this match was featured uh, before yeah. here, and uh, Torsten uh, beat uh, Denis pretty solid, like 8-3. Uh, eight to, eight to oh, that's a good scoreline. Dennis Grabe is uh, at the moment actually one of the players that. Uh, well, they were he gets e yeah, the, they, they like were pretty even until uh, like four three, and then like uh, a few things probably yes, changed. T t Torsten maybe like he kicked then uh, kicked another gear, and uh, there were a couple of uh, bad rolls for Dennis, and uh, just after that uh, his game uh, took a decline, and uh, yeah, he wasn't present anymore. Now, but but Grabe is also one of the or Grabe, I think is actually yeah. the yeah, is correct. The I'm not not completely sure, but. Um, Dennis is one of the players that does have a little bit of a temper. I being another one of those players, uh, he's probably handling it a little bit better than I am. But um, yeah, you know, when when you're like an emotional player, sometimes you know, if you get a few bad rolls, it it can sometimes get to you. Yeah, so sure. Uh, a couple of uh, other results, like interesting one, uh, Konstantin Stepanov uh, lost to Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, uh, mm. who you could also uh, see here in the morning yeah. in our live feed, 8-4 uh, to four in favor of Sanchez Ruiz, and uh, it will be the Spaniard uh, opposing Corey Duell. Corey Duell, uh, like expected, uh, got a white watch against one of the Russian amateurs. Oh, okay. Well, I must say that Stepanov is not that big of, su of a surprise uh, that he could lose to Francisco because uh, earlier this year when I was at the European Championships uh, Francisco was one of the guys that was you know going deep in uh, was it the Euro Tour he uh, was in the final correct me if I'm wrong out there but uh, oh, I just tried to check yeah but yeah Francisco was uh, really growing in that uh, particular event over those uh, two weeks um, so yeah yeah he, he was a runner-up at the uh, European Championships 8-ball uh, oh yeah yeah that uh, was the one and in and the, he, uh, in uh, the uh, Euro uh, Tour uh, he also uh, came uh, pretty far and actually he, he, he won the 9-ball also according to this, yep. this part yeah he did win one So yeah, Mika's back in a chair just waiting for his opponent. Not exactly the worst chair to sit in. Uh, whenever the cameraman can get a closer look at it. Uh, well, we can see it on this angle. Yeah. Look, you even have a footrest. And it's... Uh, well, it's important uh, when the, ta the chairs are that high. Yeah. <laughs> it also enables players to not have to stand up to see a situation on the table because they sit high and they can actually see the table, so... Yeah, that's why we have a yeah. uh, spe special uh, billiard furniture. <laughs> yeah. We should have that in more clubs, for sure. Yeah, exactly. And we should also have the diamond table, but uh, I could keep begging for that in my club. I guarantee you it's not going to happen. It's uh, That's an expensive process. Why not? Maybe you could uh, be lucky and get a used one in pretty decent condition. That's true. Um, it would be the first table ev if it ever c ever came to Denmark because we don't have a single uh, diamond table in Denmark. Well, I think uh, it's weird because uh, I sup I guess uh, the European uh, dealership for diamond uh, is located in Norway. Yeah, it's not that close. Uh, uh, sorry, not, not that yeah. far away. So, but the thing is the pricing of it compared to if you buy um, dynamic and also that's an an easy excuse for. Um, all of the club owners to to say yeah we want dynamic because it's what they use on the Euro Tour. The fact is the table is cheaper, so they're going to take the cheap option because everybody needs to save money and uh, especially the pool rooms are not doing that well in Denmark at the moment. Um, sadly, one of my favorite clubs is going to close down in uh, a few months' time, and that club has a history of like 20 years, I think, at least in that location. 15, 20 years, and uh, it's also the club where I won my first Danish championship, so that's a bit sad actually, now that I think about it. Oh, that's nice. Uh, Christine Etkach, a female player from Russia, is on a pretty good run. Uh, two uh, matches in a row, she won 8-1. Oh, yes. she's beating the guys big. Yeah, she's in top form. Wow, wow, wow. 
And uh, it was, I think, uh, about uh, two, two or three weeks ago uh, when uh, Christina beat Ruslan Chinakov uh, during wow. a local event. So well, called, she's so, so a, called she's Ru a shooter. Russian Cup, yeah. She's a shooter. I saw it at, at the European Championships. Uh, and uh She might be like a uh, female Shaneman Warning form because uh, she actually sh she said uh, herself that I think uh, no one uh, on the circuit uh, pra does practice as much as I do. No, meaning, I think meaning, meaning, meaning female. Yeah, absolutely. She uh, She's one of the hardest workers in the game. They see a ball down, cue ball in not so big control, and two is tied up with the eight, and the one is in a bad position, so I call either a push out or a safety. Well, no doubt uh, about that. Uh, we are going to start this track uh, with a little bit of safety battle. Hopefully not a safety battle that puts all the balls in front of one <laughs> corner like I saw in Pyramid yesterday. That was like 10, 15 oh balls in, yeah, that's in one corner. That's just the nature of the game. Yeah, it happens sometimes. Yeah, sometimes uh, so they are too cautious and uh, it happens and uh, it looks like a little bit of uh, one pocket, you know. like. Uh, yeah, it can actually. But in this case, uh, you, we will probably see a couple of maybe three or four safety shots before you get an opening. So whoever wins here probably gets uh, Ralph Suke in the next round. Yeah, of course, yeah, Ralph yeah. first uh, has to deal with a player from Belarus. But is so he still going? Yeah, because yes. he was. Wow, that makes it slow. He's, he's in the lead. He's in the lead, like five to five to three. They started uh, at the same time as me almost, and I've been done for about an hour. Wow! Wow! <laughs> So it must be a uh, well, like mentioned already. We don't. We don't. Uh, this tournament uh, doesn't implement a shot clock here. He's left a gap. Yeah, he's left a gap for the one. He can bank it if he wants to, and even uh, he can duck behind the cluster. Like uh, yeah, he uh, can. Nah, he's not gonna go for the pot here. He's gonna save it behind uh, the eight. Would be the most sensible thing to do. No, 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 why you do... Oh, <laughs> I was about to say, don't throw that's the cue ball in the, the pocket. That's a diamond table with a pretty long shelf. Poc yeah. The pocket shelf is enough. Uh, on a dynamic, that would have dropped. But, uh... I think he... Uh, I really don't think he was trying to break up the cluster at the same time. I think... Don't you think that would have been t a bit too risky? Mm, yeah, sure. Just maybe go behind Ma it. Oh well, well, maybe, maybe. Uh, it was an aggressive fade. Ma ma maybe Mika a little bit misjudged the rebound because he was mm. hoping for uh, maybe more uh, full uh, cushioned hit from yeah. the kill. That could have been it. But either way, it's a tough shot for his opponent. Well, wow, shoots it pretty nice. Yeah, and but behind it's not the two now, it's not fast enough. Yes. Long straight shots. This is what we like in snooker. And I Mika was a snooker player at first, you know, so mm. let's see. Long straight. Used the pocket a little bit, but it went in. I must have missed uh, that part of his uh, biography about yeah, being a snooker player. Um, he started out with uh, mostly snooker, but uh, then quickly turned to pool. Uh, right now he's not snowing the showing the snooker accuracy so much, but uh, th they're still going in. So yeah, question is, trust the middle pocket or go all up in the corner? Looks like the middle pocket, yeah. No, safety. <laughs> Interesting. So he must be a little bit probably intimidated by the shooting to the side because of like again the diamond tables and the mm. angle of attack was not very, maybe too satisfactory for him. Yeah, I also think that he's not really feeling the pace of the table yet because he could have cut it into the corner and then gone c twice across and... Uh well, actually not trying to take anything from uh, Ruslan of... Uh, uh, Mika sees that uh, the level of his play maybe is not like uh, up to the highest standards and uh, he feels that uh, the, this kind of uh, play could probably uh, bring uh, some favor. Yeah, you know, we, a couple of safeties can frustrate uh, some of those players that are not used to getting yeah, into maybe these difficult maybe shots. Maybe who are not very, very well, well in the kicking. Yeah. In the kicking department. And 
But yeah, I was a little bit surprised just because I know that Mika is usually quite aggressive as a player. Yeah, and he had at least, uh, like we mentioned, uh, at least two pockets uh, to yeah, choose for from. Sure. Exactly. But there you see, he's, he's he's making his opponent think. So if he gives ball in hand here, you know, like you say, it could be a massive advantage because psychologically you would be up on uh, your opponent. Is he going for a bank here? Maybe the cue ball just barely passes between the 10 and the 7. I believe it's the 7 ball, yeah. I, I don't think he can hit it cleanly. Maybe just with a little help of... Uh, yeah. Ah, uh, a foul. foul. And there you see. His plan works, you know. So we have some players walking in the background uh, to start their Russian pyramid match. The event is still going and uh, they have, uh, can you believe it, uh, over uh, 270 entrants. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah, because uh, actually Kremlin Cup is one of the biggest, if not the biggest event uh, of the year here in Russia. So it attracts many, many people, in including amateurs. Yeah, I s I've seen quite a lot of different people just come to to watch it and uh, I think it's just because it's maybe the early rounds that there are not that many people sitting in the spectator seats just yet I think yeah, f f first of all uh, how that, that's a working day yeah <laughs> and uh, having to interrupt myself here and you <laughs> because what was that shot <laughs> M Mika is mocking at himself right now yeah 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 because he knows that that was a blatant mistake yeah He's usually so good at cutting the ball, so that surprised me. Massive difference. 3 2 or 4 1. That is actually massive. Yeah, so sure. He's got, uh, a, he's got a cool down. Yeah, he's like he's got to forget got it. He's got something to be thinking about. Yeah. He's got to forget about this wreck and just be ready for the next one if this guy clears it up. Could be a little bit of a swing here because he's mm, almost straight. Well, almost actually, straight. Uh, actually he here even, even a stop shot would do actually because mm, the, the, yeah. ten, the 10 ball could be uh, cut. Yeah, but I think that's too risky. Uh, he's going to try and draw it back. But be careful for the middle pocket. That's what I'm saying. Wow. That's a good stroke. That's a really good stroke, actually. Just barely three cushions, yeah? And straight on a 10. Yep. Well, 3 2 or 4 1, you see? Unexpected so. chance for Stal uh, Salimir. Yeah. Yeah, that, uh, that is not what I expected for that wreck. There you see. A lot of people say pool is predictable, but. It really isn't. Yes, until the very last ball, actually, because... Uh, they know until the fat lady sings. Even, yes, e even the easiest of them uh, could be missed for uh, some odd reason. Yeah. I can tell you, I came 5-0 up in my last match. I did win it 8-4, but from 5-0, having played beautiful and not made a single scratch in the break and broke perfectly, I suddenly couldn't pot a ball. On the break, yeah? No, in, ge in general. <laughs> I, <w> <laughs> really? I was missing 10 <laughs> balls, 7 balls, 8 balls, I don't know. It was just crazy. And <laughs> I was fearing that it was going to go, you know, even tighter. And uh, in the end, I got it 8-4. But, uh, yeah, it was uh, a bit scary how my level dropped. So it, it can happen, you know. And we took a timeout at 5-0. He was really annoyed with, with a few things on the table. So uh, that kind of swung the momentum for me also. And there you see, that's maybe so what he was Mika worrying about. Th this time Miko went for a power break and he lost control over the cue ball, yeah. which disappeared in the side pocket. Yeah, so he's not happy at the moment. So that might have been something he noticed in practice, and that's why he maybe sped down a little bit on the, on the break. So now another good chance to maybe even get level, 3-3. Three, three ball in hand and the two ball is nicely placed if you can just follow it 
Yes, of course, once again, it's very important uh, for Rimanen to forget his mistake from the previous yeah. wreck as soon as possible. Just let it go. Yeah. Fairly decent on the two here. You can just draw back onto the cushion and get away from it with about a ball length. Getting a quick look at his uh, special shoes. You know what I noticed? Torsten Holman has the Judd Trump shoes. The the shoes that are about 1,300 euros. The you porcupine, the, 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 the spiky, the the spiky, spiky shoes. He has the same <laughs> shoes. I asked him, is it the same? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a little bit of fashion going on here. So if uh, you get a chance, try well, to check out maybe uh, it Holman's adds, shoes. Maybe it adds something to your stroke. Uh, maybe, 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 maybe Judd knows something. <laughs> there's a secret... <laughs> But yeah, thirteen hundred euros. I swear to God, I'm never gonna buy those shoes. I'm too. I'm too. Uh, first of all, I don't have the money. <laughs> Number two, I think that's way too and much. And after for all, a pair they look shoes. ugly. Oh yeah? <laughs> uh, yeah, no comment. <laughs> Thorsten, I still like you. Uh, yeah. Oh, back on the table here. He's looking in good stroke, and he's decent on the nine. Roll the nine and perfect on the ten. I know we say that maybe his level of play wasn't up to par, but it seems like he's able to, you know, do something when, yes, when, when this his kind of play uh, for sure is going to bring some confidence back. So yeah. we are level at three. Yeah, but I, I think also this is a good thing to see for, for Mika because he knows now that his opponent is able to run out whenever he makes a mistake. So they can maybe tighten the screw a little bit. And yes, uh, maybe a step up a little. Step up a little and you know, treat him as a a, a good good crazy player and uh, isn't and it's not really that he did that much wrong because he played the right shot in the, in the previous rack but then he just had a lapse of concentration and missed the four in the ne next one so yeah. so he's just really one mistake and then you saw in off on the on the break so completely different match if it could could have been 4-1 that way yes but now uh, we have a chance for Ruslan uh, to try to run out and uh, get ahead for the first time yeah and also with the two ball being placed where it is in Iraq, it, uh, it kind of gives uh, it kind of gives not an easy rack but an easier rack because it usually when it's placed there it comes back to the rail and uh, let's see how they set up and if he keeps the cue ball on the table also. There you see the two ball comes back. Whoop. No decent shot on the one, I think. Nothing has dropped actually. Yeah. My mistake. So that's sometimes actually the danger because if 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 there are some players that have been known to pattern rag a little bit, uh, if they do that and they don't know what they're doing on a break, then uh, they end up leaving an easy rack for the opponent. So there's actually no advantage in, in totally pattern racking because if you if you screw up the break then your opponent gets the easy rack so well, Mika repositioned the two so that uh, he has now a good shot here yeah. I don't think he can actually uh, get to the angle for uh, his uh, our left corner we can see I think he actually uh, has to play a safety is there just enough room Okay, actually that was, but that's a bad shot. Oh, he even managed to overcut it, uh, like uh, due to uh, too much too much uh, throw of the ball. Yeah, but because I don't he played think it with I, English. I think he tried to play a safety. I don't think he went for it. I don't think he would miss it by that much. I really don't think so. But uh, because looking at the outcome, it, it looked as if uh, actually the two ball did pass. Yeah, uh, but I. I just doubt that he would miss it by that much. He's completely misjudged it, so... But yeah, that's the thing. In the middle of the tournament, you gotta decide before the tournament which shaft you play with. You cannot change in the middle of the tournament. It's it's a bad idea because... Well, maybe provided you are absolutely sure they perform the same. Which yeah, ha which but happens. But honestly, they really don't. I have... Uh, 
I had two uh, 900 shafts from Mez and uh, one uh, 700 shaft. All the shafts are great, but they perform very different because it's a piece of wood, you know. It's it's a yeah, live after thing. After all, they they they're, supp they're supposed to because the the you, the models you mentioned are different. Yeah, but even the 900 and the 900 didn't play completely different, and it's not possible to get that. Even it's the same for Predator. I've tried so many 314 shafts, and people say they're the same. They're really not. It's 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 a live thing, so you can't really uh, you can't really uh, replicate the same thing every time. So is he just checking to see mm, if he yeah, can... Yeah, probably. Yeah, he's checking. I was afraid he's going to shoot it. No. <laughs> with, with the five balls still on the table. I would let him do it because I'm not supposed to tell him you're on the wrong ball. But but yeah, like I said, you know, uh, shafts play different. Even the same model of every brand of Q. I've tried the Lucassis, I've tried the Dermots, and tried the same model of so many different Qs. And they all play a little bit different, so... Why doesn't he go uh, just uh, two uh, rails across the table uh, for an open pocket for the six? Uh, because I think he feels that, w and I, when I look at it, the angle looks like there's a lot of room. Um, I think the pot is definitely on, so he seems like he's uh, he's enjoying himself, you know, because he's he's a uh, no wealth now. He's not enjoying <laughs> himself. Bad but decision. Yeah, it was a bad decision. I would have played that with backspin uh, to try and just come back on the seven. Well, he got very good shape actually on the six, uh, the one he was looking for. Yeah. But uh, the next shot. I think maybe he, he the cue ball just went off the eight and then caromed into the ten and then yes, in. Yes, exa so exactly. Yes. And I don't think he expected that at all. This is the part of the game uh, where uh, straight pool players are very experienced in. Yeah, they, maybe they just, maybe uh, they just uh, know very good uh, how the ball rebounds at which part of the ball uh, yeah. you, you are supposed to hit uh, to send the cue ball here or there. Yeah, then you know which kind of shots that you can risk yeah. taking with those little cannons. So because so actually all it takes uh, just uh, uh, keeping the uh, cue tip yeah. uh, a little bit lower or a little bit higher and uh, you can get exactly. completely different results. So and even if it's inside or outside spin. Because it was a little bit careless uh, yeah. from uh, Stanimir and uh, that's a, a gap opened for Mika Imanen. And he takes another lead. I think he would be very happy to yeah, see sure, that. Yeah, sure, because like it's uh, actually two wrecks. It's like yeah, it's a B being four three up instead of being uh, three four down. Yeah, for sure. And especially how the f the the way things went because he made a couple of mistakes and maybe thought that he was going to get a couple of games down and then suddenly being up again. So he's so yeah, he he he, he seems to pot well this Ruslanov, but. A little bit of inexperience in terms of shot selection. Well, and we don't know uh, what is his background like uh, on a big stage like this one. Oh, it's at always at different. At, at, at big events, yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, let, let me tell you, uh, the lights here is very different from when you're in a club. Um, because there's no light over the table, there's just light in the ceiling, which is about 30 meters, 40 meters up. So, it is a different different situation completely if you haven't tried it before. Let's see where the cue ball goes. You see, again, not really control over the cue ball. Mm, yeah, not at all. Nope. But uh, a ball is down, and he's got some kind of a shot. Yeah, he's got a nasty cluster uh, be beside the side mm. pocket. And uh, most important, his cue ball uh, yeah. is lost and uh, near the end rail. I see now the way he walks around the table when he was putting back his uh, break cube. He's got a combo here. Yeah. Of course he is frustrated about his yeah, performance he, he's here. He's yeah. showing his frustration right now because I think he was trying to land the cue ball on the middle of the table. It looked like he wasn't going for the cut break. So he's just got to calm himself down and Hakona Matata. Take it easy and uh I'm just thinking Taking on this combo, you actually might might nudge the balls, yes. And but but you also might snooker yourself. Okay, he got okay on it, so it's not too bad. He opened up the five and the nine as well. That went a lot better than I feared it could. Gonna deal with a little bit of awkward bridging here. Yeah, it's just looks like he looks like he can only shoot it with a right hand side, so he's got to stand up on it a little bit to get center ball hit. 
Yep. Wobbled into pocket. It's still in. Just a little bit of backspin here. Get on the center of the table for the three. And I think now he's probably just going to can on the six slightly with low left. Yeah, he's got a little angle, so yeah. uh, he cannot stop the cue ball exactly. dead on the tracks. Ah. Uh, he was a little bit uh, risky, like play, playing with six ball. He could uh, easily have it tied up uh, with yeah. the ten and uh, have another cluster. Uh, but that's the thing, because that was the kind of shot, like I said, he needed a cannon, but he was trusting a little bit to the luck there, and he's not really having the rolls with that at the moment. What a recovery. Wow. That was a great shot. Played that one with inside English to stop it for the six. That was a great shot. Yeah, you were just looking at the brackets and he made a brilliant shot there while you were away. Looks okay this. Go around the two cushions. Yep. So please take notice uh, to the, oh, the, the the correct score is on the Ooh. top right top right corner here. The yeah. actual score is three to four in favor of Mika. Yeah. And now extending to three to five. Yeah. yeah I thought he was gonna land short on the ten, but he but just got you, there. You just uh, have to remember that the table is plays a little bit uh, more speedier than <laughs> supposed to, so it's okay. That's true. That's true. <laughs> that's true. It's still okay. Yeah, for a short second I thought he was going to land awkward on it. But, uh, yeah. Very nice picture of both players and uh, neither uh, is satisfied. <laughs> yeah, as, as e even though he's up two games, he knows that it's it's still a wish risky situation because he has made a couple of mistakes, but uh, pulled out a couple of really great shots in this rack to, uh, to get up two games. Now it's the Bulgarian to do the breaks. Just checking the rack to see if there are any gaps. Using an open bridge I for do. the break. I do the same. So I was actually looking and I think, hey, that's my break. Hmm. Um, I try, honestly, I've tried it for so many weeks. Uh, every time I try to change it, because everybody says, ah, you have to use a close bridge. And uh doesn't well, work for me. I, 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 I shoot the cue ball over the table. I can't control it. The only thing is uh, it's uh, least possible to generate uh, proper power. Probably. Mm. No, nope. for me with the open bridge, I get a lot more power. Hmm. Interesting. I have a huge shoulder I think drop. You, I think you don't see it often. The player. There's not a lot of players that do yes. it. Wow, that stayed up. He missed it actually. He a little bit uh, undercut it. He hit the farther jaw and uh, just the ball stayed. So yeah, he actually overcut it. He cut it too thin. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, but there's a jump shot on. And he's already gotten his jump cue out, so... And there's an easy kick shot if you want. Yeah. But uh, he feels confident in it. You see. But... Uh, <laughs> that was the thing about that one, because if you hit it too thick, you're always going to just leave a long bang shot here, or a safety. Um, so yeah, he hit a bit too full. So maybe now the safety behind the eight. Well, so could do. Probably it uh, makes the kick shot on the one more preferable decision because like the cuball stays there and uh, you have yeah, you have and a shot he, he, could, he could have low rolled it and he would have had a pretty good shot on the uh, the three after. So yeah, he's gonna be behind the eight if uh, Mika Still plays pretty this decent probably. here. That's a. Uh -huh. I was hoping for a bank shot, but yeah. now looks like a yeah, safety safe, decent and safe. a bank shot at the same time. <laughs> 
Actually, the three being so close to the pocket makes it uh, a little bit more makeable. You see, he's not happy with where it is. Well, actually, had he made it, uh, he, he, he would have been in trouble. Oh, yes. So the um, path uh, of the three ball was a little bit too risky. Yeah. Oh, I'm surprised to see uh, the Albanian player Edmond Zaya on the loser's side of the bracket. Is he uh, quite a good player? Or Yes, yes. I had an Albanian uh, in the European Championships or the Euro Tour at the same time in April and uh, I only beat him on Hill Hill. Actually, it, could it could have been that Yes, player. actually he lost, he lost to one of the sharpshooters, local sharpshooters, Sergei Lutsker, 8-4. Oh, okay. Yeah, you've got a lot of great players here, and uh, I don't know half yeah, of them. Yeah, especially the junior ones. Yeah, the new young talent in uh, pool in Russia is uh, but just, uh, just like in Poland. You know, th it's two countries that really have a good talent base. Actually, we have, I think, uh, another player from Albania who might be better than Edmund Zaya is uh, Eklent Kachi, who travels. Oh yeah, Kachi, yeah, 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 yes, yeah, who tra yeah. travels uh, around pretty much. Yeah, Kachi is a really a sharp shooter, and yeah. he's, he's also known for being good at snooker, and that's a very good attribute, you know. You're just a little bit more accurate when you're playing pool then. So he's a yeah, dangerous sure. guy, dangerous guy. Yeah, sure, but snooker background didn't help Vitaly Pavluchin, a uh, Russian player, uh, to beat uh, Francisco Sanchez Ruiz. Mm. He's gone for the kick, and he's... Yeah. yeah. Mig has a shot here, but uh, I think also Vitali is a completely different story because he doesn't have that big of a stroke. He has a short delivery. Yes, yes, that's uh, I w I w I w that uh, was uh, I was talking about this uh, mm. during his match uh, against Francisco, and yeah. uh, I think uh, I have been always amazed about uh, this kind of his fundamentals because I think he actually ruined his stroke in a recent couple of years because he wasn't shooting like that before. And uh, I'm surprised how how at all he is capable of making uh, like the balls uh, playing snooker with with in such a fashion. Yeah, true. Um, because he, he it looks like his technique is a little bit like uh, the old school snooker players, like from 20, 30 years ago. Like good pre-strokes, and then suddenly a short hook shot. Like when, a when when more like more, more like a jab, you know. Yeah, he jabs <laughs> at the ball, and uh, and and I saw w I saw one of the shots he ca had against uh, Ruiz where he snookered himself. And that kind of shot wouldn't happen if uh, you know if you had a full yeah, with a smooth delivery and yeah, yeah. exactly. So, um, oi, 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 use the pocket there a little bit. But yeah, back on puff looking very quickly is that uh, a straight combo? Yeah, straight combo. But yeah, avoid jabbing at the ball and then stroke a little bit more. It is still possible to miss. Even if it's straight, <laughs> but it is. But uh, makes it a little bit easier. But yeah, now it looks like six or three. Yeah, and what I was about to say is maybe getting to that stage where he feels like he can not relax, but he can breathe a little bit of a sigh of relief because he was about to go down a couple of racks, and really now yeah. he's 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 kind of swung it around and he's it must have been three to four uh, like uh, maybe uh, ten minutes ago yeah so can't really complain six three and up with a good leads Interesting to see whether or not he can keep the cue ball on the table this time. Yeah, you see he's checking it. He's doing warm-up strokes here in front of the commentator box. He's really wanting to go through it straight. And he has been cross-queuing a little bit. And that's what you have when you do the shoulder drop. You can cross-queue it. So that's the, that's the main worry here. And, and again, the, the, and the cue ball took the same path. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. He's 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 downing his break at the moment. 
in the very first match I did four scratches exactly the same thing into the right middle pocket like he did so um, I shortened my bridge why not trying to compensate your aim to uh, the left a little bit if, trust me I had the same problem and I was like yeah I'm aiming a little bit more to the left and I wasn't and I could not tell you for the life of me why I couldn't see it um, Looking into the sky is not going to help you, Mika, because the lights up there are bright and you're going to be blind from them. Look down, if anything. The lights up there are bright. But yeah, I had four scratches. I was lucky enough to win the match because I wasn't playing well in the first match. So I was struggling with the same thing. He's played a decent shot here. He's uh, perfect on the three. He just stun it out for the four. Of course, he uh, will have to deal with the six, uh, playing the six-eight combo, hopefully. Yeah, I think uh, if he gets good on the uh, on the five, you know, it, it's going to be easy for him to to leave some sort of a shot uh, into the right corner, and I think that's what he's going to try and do. I don't think he wants to play the combo here. I think he wants to land on it into the corner. There you oh, see. That would be some kind of a very precision shape. And oh, uh, good perfect, shot. Good perfect, shot. Perfect, good yeah. shot. Just making sure that he's not... So you uh, see, in Bulgaria, they also can play. <laughs> For sure. Can play some pool. <laughs> we have a good Bulgarian in Denmark. Um, he's not playing elite, but uh, he's definitely one of those that, uh, you know, he listens when you tell him something, and he asks questions. How do you do this, and how do you do that? And you explain it to him, and... He actually goes and tries and practices it, and uh, you know he's he's playing on the 500 level now, and uh, we have a thousand level, which is elite, and then he's on the 500 level, mm -hmm. and he plays uh, pretty solid. Picking S one back here. So does so does Stanimir Ruslanov here. Six yes. four. Bulgaria has a player, and he's going to make the break in the coming wreck. And judging by things, he keeps the cue ball on the table. <laughs> That's what you are always looking for yeah. when you are breaking. Absolutely. One of the best advice uh, for uh, aspiring and uh, for uh, players uh, who only start the pool journey is uh, use uh, as uh, much uh, speed stroke as you can uh, handle, as you can control. Never try to overpower the shot until you are capable of uh, controlling it. Look at a player like Ralph Sukay. You saw most of his shots every time is speed 2 or 3. He never hits a shot more than speed 4 or 5 unnecessarily. He's just so solid with position. That's it. That's it for the cubo <laughs> control. <laughs> and that was another that's it, yeah. <laughs> it got kicked. Didn't it? Uh, do you think so? I think it got kicked. Uh, for me, it looked like uh, as if uh, the hit was uh, like uh, below center and it uh, traveled immediately. Uh, like uh, a like I, a looked I looked away like from a draw the shot. I looked away from the screen just a little bit, but uh, yeah, the way they're placed, I would say Mika is going to get on the hill if he can just keep control of his emotions and uh, play one or two good positional shots yeah whatever happens uh, that might be might be another opportunity lost for yeah. Ruslanov the only problem I see here is actually uh, really the three to the four if he ends up wrong on the three it's gonna be more difficult to get good shape for the four but besides that uh, it looks quite good round and two cushions land on a two yep and perfect he can roll the two in. A little bit of top and right hand spin and just oh, float through for the... Yeah, still has got to decide about the angle uh, he wants to get on the three. Yeah, exactly. I think he just wants to... Uh, and probably uh, well, showing his uh, frustration again. Yeah, but uh, he, he overran he over the cue ball. Yeah, he didn't want to be that straight. He just wanted it off straight because then he could go around two cushions and then land on the... Uh, on the four or just one cushion even well there is a safety available oh yeah just to uh, roll forward and uh, duck behind the player like a eight and a nine it's very possible yeah so yeah the speed is uh, the speed of this table is, is surprising many because I think 
also when I played yesterday on uh, the other tables I was surprised how quick they actually were and I felt the cloth and it didn't feel like 860 it felt like 760 it mm -hmm. felt so much faster well actually so uh, here uh, they use uh, 860 HR the, 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 the newest brand uh, from uh, Simonis okay I'm gonna it's tell that to my club high resistance okay I have to tell uh, the club because I want this kind of speed in my uh, in my uh, club and that's the tables we have lovely pace of the table you just have to get used to it obviously so this is a sign of confidence because he's left himself a tester here with a four having to go back just past the middle pocket on our left side and don't snooker yourself oh and he's he misses badly oh. I'm building up so I hope that he can make a good shot so it makes the commentary good he gets a roll but well Whew. Mika is uh Mika you let me down there commentator's curse yeah he needs to regroup after this match even if you know ev even if he wins it there's some things to work on well, lucky for him, uh, he's not going to play today yeah, any longer. Oh, Ralph Suke is through. He won 8-3, to three, so okay. it's, it's Ralph Suke who is waiting for the winner of this uh, clash. Okay. That could be a tight match if uh, Imonen comes through, because uh, I've seen both of them play now a little bit, and uh, they actually both have made... Uh, quite a few mistakes so if that level of play is the same they put on if they uh, get to meet each other it's uh, I think that's going to be a well lot of safety. Tomorrow, tomorrow is a different story so yeah, for sure. uh, whoever manages to take uh, some rest better or yeah. like, uh, to to get mental relief uh, quicker yeah I think uh, we'll uh, probably have a slight edge tomorrow. Yeah the resting part is a big part of it So, has he called it into the corner? I think he has. It's a long straight jump and he's got automatic position for the 5 if he uh, makes it, so... Well, 10 ball is such a game uh, yeah. where you are supposed to yeah. make a call uh, just in case. Yeah, just exactly. in case it drops. Nice stop shot here. Almost flipped to the 4 and to the side and uh, well, didn't left uh, his opponent uh, much, but still left a shot. Maybe using the six ball as a stopper. Yeah, he's just got to be careful not to snooker himself on yeah, the sure. eight. Yeah. But um. But the cut is there. Yeah. Yeah, he knows. He's looking at the the angle of attack on the six, if it is. Well, actually, uh, I think uh, he has to use the six because if he, 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 like if he tries, if he tries to avoid this, uh, the the cue ball will, yeah. uh, will be rolling uh, away from the five, which he doesn't want. He might actually be able to avoid it and just use inside. He used inside, but you see, he's almost snookering himself. Well, it's okay, I think. Whoo! Got a roll there. He knows it. Well, get in shape. Get in shape on the six won't be easier. Uh, a little bit of backspin should be okay, but yeah, just a little bit <laughs> like, like this one. <laughs> hmm. Nice, um, okay, around to ten. A little bit of struggle here at the moment. It's not perfect pool, but you know what? A win is a win. So yeah, sure. But yeah, still struggling with the speed. He's off straight here to the wrong side. He would have liked to have been on the center. Um. But that's a little bit better. Just natural to draw it over, I think. Yep. Uh, just two balls short of getting on the hill. Yeah. Going to use the uh, two rails position. Yeah, I think just about gonna touch the second rail. Yeah. 
There you see, that's it. But again on the cushion. Is that a couple of those? And actually three. Oh, three as long as uh, he continues to make this. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, there's no problem. Good that's angle. Okay, yeah. Great camera angle. Straight in the heart uh, of the pocket. Very nice. No problems. 7-4. And I believe uh, these tables are standard pockets, not pro cut. Um, which are still pretty tough. I tell you what, uh, I had one where it was so sure it was in. It just wobbled four times and landed straight in front of the pocket. <laughs> um, but that was at speed seven or eight because I had to make a draw a draw shot with low left, so I was actually forcing the pocket to be missed. So, yeah, they are they're tough when you play hard. But if you slow roll them, uh, speed two or three, it uh, has a pretty good chance of dropping. So. Yeah, of course, on uh, shots like uh, these, uh, you want to yeah. miss the jaws and just uh, the yeah. you want the, the ball to go clean. He switched side again. Let's see what happens. <sighs> Nearly got kicked into the corner. Well, the cue ball took the same path to <laughs> bend into the right side. Yeah, but you know what? Look at the position. It's perfect. It's got perfect shape on the one and an easy shot to get down for the two. I don't see any problem with this rack. Yeah, so Obviously, with the don't make a foul yeah, now. Sure, with, with Mikabi being on, on the hill. Yeah. And we have uh, all chances that uh, this uh, rack can be the very last one of this mm. particular match. That's in as well. And he's got a good shape on the six. Just roll a couple of inches. Now he decides to go all the way down the table. Yeah. Gets in a nice angle to work with. I think he's done with rolling the balls in this because uh, he's he's not dared to trust the cushions enough, I think. So yeah, just trying to free stroke and it's just three balls left, so he will be okay. So we have a break and run out in the end. Showing a little bit of class in the end, so that's good. So it looks like uh, two completely different players in the next round. You have the guy who's happy to stroke the ball, Mike Monen, who here has the handshake against Ralph Okay, the roller. That's going to be an interesting match. Yes, sure. No doubt about this one. Congratulations to Imonen for winning this one 8-4. So guys, I don't know uh, our schedule yet, if we are going to have another match uh, tonight or not. Uh, in any case, uh, we uh, uh, would like to thank very much our special guest here, Daniel Kandi. <laughs> Thanks a lot for having me and uh, it's been wonderful to see uh, a little bit of uh, what Mika can do here. Hopefully uh, another great match uh, later on with those two. Yeah, okay, just in case, uh, stay tuned and uh, check the Facebook page uh, with the live feed. Probably, maybe we are going to have another match here. If not, uh, so we'll see you tomorrow. We are going to start like uh, 11 uh, a.m. Moscow time.